Hey guys, Mohan Pobert here and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to share with you when you make money in a deal. Now, if you're new to this channel, this channel is all about buying existing businesses. I believe that anyone out there should learn how to buy existing business instead of starting it from scratch because starting businesses from scratch is just too risky in my opinion. You can go and use the same amount of money and time to buy an existing profitable established business with existing employees, clients, track record, revenues, profits, and this is what this channel is all about. I'm in this space, I'm in business in general for more than 10 years right now. I'm working right now on a few roll-ups, which is basically bringing a few companies together and trying to sell them as a group. We have a few companies on your, our portfolio trying to sell them in Wikix um, and other different ventures that I've been involved with over the last few years. So if you want to check some of the other videos, go and check them right now. In this video, I'm going to share mostly um, people ask me, when do you make money in a business deal? When you're going to buy a business, when can you take money out of the deal, right? So there are basically a few different uh, parts or ways to take money out of the deal. And we're going to get into the details right now to explain to you exactly after you buy a business, when exactly can you make money? So let's get into the details of that. So the first option to take a money out of a business acquisition and again, I'm talking if you have an existing business and you buy a different business or if you don't have any business or and you go and buy your first business as an acquisition. So the first option is if you raise capital to buy the business, in some ways, in some opportunities, some deals, you can raise more money than you need uh, to actually operate and trade the business day to day. So when you raise more capital than you need to pay for the seller at closing, and to trade the business, basically the rest of the money and after fees, I mean, sometimes obviously you need to pay for fees for accountants, for lawyers, for due diligence, if you have those in your terms. And the extra of that money is basically money you can take home at closing. So let's say if you're looking to buy a business and the business owner, the seller, he's asking for $100,000 at closing and the rest of it, let's say, is structured over a few periods of years and you're able to raise one hundred fifty thousand or two hundred thousand dollars. Let's say you need to raise two. You can raise two hundred thousand dollars, right, from other financial institutions, from other financial partners or equity partners. With equity, it might be different because equity partners might won't like the idea that you're taking money home and not putting it into the business. But let's assume that you're only using debt and only raising, let's say, capital from asset-based lenders. And as long as you raise more capital than you need to pay for the seller, in our case, $100,000, let's say you're able to raise $200,000 because there's a lot of accounts receivables in the business, then the difference is what you can take home. Let's say you have a $100,000 difference, you can even keep $50,000 in the business for um, just to inject some more capital into the business and reinvest it for more advertising, more um, hiring more employees, potentially a manager to take over your role. And then you can step back and be the kind of like the visionary and the, the owner shareholder um, and the rest of it. I mean, you can just take home. So that's that's the first option, right? You raise more capital than you need at closing and the rest of it you take um, for yourself. The second, uh, I guess, part is while owning the business. I mean, when while owning the business, obviously you're the owner, you can do whatever you want with the money in the business. Obviously, there is an amount of capital that you need to trade the day-to-day -day of the business. Um, ideally, some of that money potentially used to hire someone else to run the day-to-day. -day. Um, it can be you who run the day-to-day -day and, and is the day-to-day -day manager. It's up to you, of course. Uh, but the extra money you can take home either on a regular basis or a monthly basis as an income, as a dividends, to have like a quarterly distribution for dividends or yearly distributions. Obviously, it's your business, your decision. And I would suggest you to just uh, talk to your accountant in that case for him to give you kind of like the best scenario for you in terms of your situation, your taxes and all that stuff. Right. So that's the second way for you to take money out of the deal while you own the business. If the business is making X amount of, uh, of profits and you have some cash flow, you can take some of it home. Right. And obviously the, the third part is when you sell the business. So when you sell a business, obviously that's the highest payday. And that's what I, I hope for all of you guys to have as many of those as possible is to have those kind of capital events. And as one of my mentors said, the best time to sell a business is now. And the only time you're really making money from a business is when you sell the business. So obviously if you sell the business after a few years of uh, turn, uh, turning around the business or let's say growing the business a little bit, you can then sell it. And then, I mean, obviously it depends on your industry. Let's say your business is making $200,000 in profits, in EBITDA, in pre-tax profit. And it's a, um, I don't know, a very traditional business. You could probably sell it for five times multiples. And that's where you can make like around a million dollar um, at exit. So you have three different options, right? You have 
first option, when you buy the business, when you raise more capital than you need, you can take some money home. Second option is when you own the business, you can take an income, a dividend, you can even have some kind of consultancy fees and you have a different company who you're taking that money uh, from. Obviously, all, all those things for tax reasons. And the third option is when you sell the business and then obviously that's the, the biggest capital event. And that's where you really have those, uh, I guess, milestones that you have those peaks in your wealth building plan. And that's why I think that's the ideal scenario for you. And if you want to ha have multiple businesses with managers running those businesses for you, then you can have multiples of those capital events and build your wealth. And in my opinion, have the best lifestyle as well. And it's just that... Uh, based on what I know in business, this is the, the coolest business to, to be involved with because it's mostly about being involved with people, um, kind of like being involved in negotiating big deals and, and working on cool things and many industries and amazing people. So I hope that answered that question. Um, and yeah, if you have any other question, just let me know in the comments below. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to all of my channels, like this video, comment below, let me know what you think. And if you want some more A to Z training on how some of my clients are buying one to three businesses a year, see the links in the description below. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon.